This Mass comes to you from the St Mary's Chapel of St Carthage's Cathedral Parish, Lismore. Our COVID safe celebration is in accordance with instructions from the Bishop of Lismore and State Government guidelines. All our music is in the public domain, used under one licence or are original works of the Diocese of Lismore. If you have a prayer intention, please visit our Facebook page or contact us at lismorediocese.org. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. With that sign of the cross, we begin our holy week, our walk with Jesus through his passion, death, to his resurrection. And as we begin the solemn Mass for Palm Sunday, let's acknowledge that it is for me and for you that he came into the world. It is for us that he suffered and died. Let us place on the altar of God that of us, of each of us, which we place so that we may be transformed and purified by the events of this week. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue, so that I may know how to reply to the wearied, he provides me with speech. Each morning, he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, my God why, why have you abandoned me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips and they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord. Let him save him. Let him release him if this is his friend. My, my God, my God. God. Why have you abandoned me? Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked beset me. They, they tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My, my God, God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. My, my God, God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are, and being as all men are, he was humbly yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all things, all beings in the heavens and on earth and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient for us even to death, dying on the cross. Therefore, God raised him on high and gave him a name above all other names. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ King, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. First thing in the morning, the chief priests, together with the elders and scribes, in short, the whole Sanhedrin, had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He answered. It is you who say it. And the chief priests brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned him again. Have you no pity at all? See how many assertions are being brought against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no reply. At festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now, a man called Barabbas was then in prison with the rioters who had committed murder during the uprising. When the crowd went up, 
and began to ask Pilate the customary favour, Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realised it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. The chief priests, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should release Barabbas for them instead. Then Pilate spoke again. But in that case, what am I to do with the man you are calling king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate answered them, Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and having ordered Jesus to be scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called the co whole cohort together. They dressed him up in purple, twisted thorns into a crown and put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed and spat on him, and they went down on their knees to do him homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his own clothes. They led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country, to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him mixed wine with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him and shared out his clothes, casting lots to decide who each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription giving the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, Ah, so you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Then save yourself, come down from the cross. The chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves in the same way. They said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, for us to see it and believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was a darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling on Elijah. Someone ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait and see if Elijah will come and take him down. But Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion, who was standing in front of him, had seen how he had died, and he said, In truth, this man was a son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. We have just heard 
what in Mark's Gospel are the last words of Jesus Christ before he dies. And they are, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And these are words which need to ring in the ears of every Christian, not only now, but in every age, because after these words in Mark's Gospel, he dies. In another Gospel, he says, into your hands I commend my spirit. And these words are of great significance for us as we prepare to walk in with him into the triduum. This year in Mark's Gospel for Passion Sunday, we celebrate not only the, the death of Christ, but the fundamental teaching which Mark wants to give us. And one of the fundamental teachings of Mark's Gospel is discipleship. In Mark's Gospel, every Christian is called to follow Christ. And implicitly in that is to follow him into what we're celebrating this week, is to walk with him, be part of him in the Last Supper, in his passion, his death, and into the resurrection. Because this discipleship is, I believe, something which we need to find again for ourselves. But as we try to determine how to follow him, because nobody wants to go to the cross and die, so how can we think of what this means? We go back to his last words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I believe that every human being at some part in his or her life either will say these words or will come, close, or will come so close to them because we will eventually come to a point where we think God is no longer with us, when we think that God no longer loves us. I can remember about 20 years ago, I was giving some talks to the students at Canterbury University, Christchurch, New Zealand. And the students had been told by previous speakers that if you're Christians, you show it because you're always happy. And I came in as a Carmelite and told them the opposite. And one young girl put up a hand and she said, I feel so relieved, Father. Is what you're saying correct? I said, well, I don't know, but I hope it is. And I said, why do you ask? And she says, because I can't be happy all my life. I go through times when I feel sad. I go through times when I think God is no longer there. And you're telling me that this is the normal way and that even when I think God is not there, God in fact is with me. And I said to her, yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. I'm telling it to you now because you're young, because you will have times when you will feel that God has abandoned you or you will start to wonder whether God exists. And it's in those times that your discipleship is so critical. It's in those times that you must press ahead and find the way forward. Jesus' life ends with that kind of experience. And in that, in Mark's Gospel, we're given the key to discipleship. And that is the discipleship that we have to Jesus goes this way. He is with me, however I am. It's almost as if it's not so much that I try to follow him, but he follows me, even to the point where God seems to be absent, so that in every experience that I have, I can be a disciple, that every experience that I have in whatever it is, I can find God. And that's what we're being invited into in Mark's Gospel this Palm Sunday. We're being invited to find our Lord in our own lives and from there to walk with him. And I invite you to walk with him this Holy Week because somewhere in the story that we celebrate, either in our Lord's experience or in the experience of one of the other people, you will find yourself. And when you have that, you will have an immediate connection to this week and you will be able to follow him. And as a consequence, by Easter Sunday, you will be closer to him because you will find 
as we should find every Holy Week, every Easter Triduum, that on the other side of myself is Jesus Christ, because he and I are one, if only I can begin to make that connection. Let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended, he ascended into, into heaven, heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our King has entered his city. Our palms and cries of homage fade away as the words of the gospel tell the story of his suffering and death. Let us bring our prayers to the Father through the Son he gave up for us with love beyond all comprehension. For all people of the earth, that the cross of Christ will be an inspiring sign of divine love and human hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peoples of all races and nations to seek peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those impacted by the floods. May our response to their suffering be generous and bring them comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of penance, reflection, and gratitude during these chosen days. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are sick and bereaved might receive healing and acceptance through Christ and the intercession of Saint Mary of the Cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gentle repose of the fightful departed, especially Benjamin Richardson, Marcel Livotto, Fernanda Santin, Patricia Bell, Norman Corbett, Russell Cook, and Brian Harmony. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us continue to pray for those hundreds of thousands who have died of COVID-19 for the rapid recovery of those who've contracted the virus, for the strengthening of those who fight the virus, for ourselves that we may have God's protection and that we will soon have cures to make the world safe again. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come as your people. 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. My dear Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the prize and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your we death, O Lord. Lord <coughs> and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Saint Teresa, Saint John of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. 
at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
and let us pray. O Lord, nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, the just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. And bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Father, I pray that all those who watch this Mass may be granted the gift of an open heart. May they, through prayer, enter themselves this Easter Triduum and experience your Son. May they walk with him always and through his presence in their life know your consolation, your care and your love in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. For over half a century, Project Compassion has been bringing supporters of Caritas Australia together in an extraordinary demonstration of faith, love and generosity. As one of our nation's longest running charity campaigns, Project Compassion's iconic collection boxes have become a fond and nostalgic part of our lives. A visible reminder around homes, schools, churches and the community that it's that time of year to support Caritas Australia's annual Lenten Appeal. And this little box makes change. Transforming lives around the world. We want to thank the people of Australia for their generosity and for what they have done for our community. Over half a century, we have raised more than $500 million to help support the world's most remote, vulnerable and marginalised communities overcome the challenges of living with poverty. Thanks to your generous support, across five decades of natural disasters, conflicts, refugee crises and food and water shortages, Caritas Australia has worked alongside vulnerable communities in Africa, Asia, the Middle East, Latin America, the Pacific, and our first Australian communities. I'm so grateful for the relationship that I've had with Caritas. Shukran la Caritas Australia ala hada daam, lano hada daam biati aman. Thanks to you, uh, the indigenous uh, community now can have uh, their own dreams, their own hopes, so they can make sure the future will be better for them. I want to thank the people who are in Australia, all the love and respect. 
During COVID-19, our local partnerships on the ground have enabled us to respond quickly to minimise the spread of coronavirus. By adjusting our existing programs, working through our extensive international humanitarian network, we have been able to share COVID-19 prevention measures, distribute soap, masks and food kits while continuing our long-term development work. Predictions that extreme poverty rates are set to rise for the first time in 20 years, Caritas Australia needs supporters like you now more than ever. Caritas Australia's project has had a good effect on my life. Proyekto ng Caritas Australia. This year, Caritas Australia has presented five powerful stories of hope and resilience about people in vulnerable communities who, in the face of remarkable challenges, are striving to be more. For the first time, I felt cared for, accepted and that I could be more. As we celebrate the Australian icon that is Project Compassion, we would like to thank you and generations of supporters nationwide for your commitment to bringing about positive change. Thank you for aspiring to be more. Thank you very much, Characters Australia. Thank you, Project Compassion. Terima kasih, Caritas Australia. Thank you, Caritas Australia. Thank you, Project Compassion. Please give generously to Project Compassion today.